Anatomy of the Flexor Digitorum Longus Origin It arises from the posterior surface of the mid tibia immediately below the solial line and medial to the tibial origin of the tibialis posterior. It is medial to a vertical line that separates the tibialis posterior from the flexor digitorum longus. The tendon of the flexor digitorum longus passes behind the medial malleolus in a groove. This groove contains the tibialis posterior tendon also, although they are separated from each other. Tom, Dick and Harry showed the arrangement of the structures in this area. You probably need to memorize that. This is a cross section of the leg showing the muscle arrangement in the leg and the position of the flexor digitorum longus muscle. Just remember it is in the deep posterior compartment of the leg. What is the knot of Henry? It is the point of crossing of the two tendons, the flexor digitorum longus and the flexor hallucis longus. So after the tendons curve under the medial malleolus and the talus, they begin to converge and eventually cross. The flexor hallucis longus is crossed deep to the flexor digitorum longus tendon into the medial compartment of the foot. So the digitorum becomes more plantar or superficial. At that point, the two tendons are connected by a strong tendinous slip. This is an important point and I will take a few seconds to explain it. Tibialis posterior tendon insufficiency or rupture is not uncommon and it can be missed, but when it is diagnosed, it will be treated probably by a protocol, one of the treatment options is to borrow a tendon next to it to reinforce the function of the tibialis posterior tendon. The logical tendon that next to it is the flexor digitorum longus tendon. So we're going to borrow that. We use it as a tendon transfer, not alone, but in conjunction of other procedure, usually bony procedure. So because of that intersection between the flexor hallucis longus and the flexor digitorum longus tendons, if we transect the digitorum proximal to the knot of Henry to correct the tibialis posterior dysfunction, that will result in retention of the function of the big toe and the lesser toes. So crossing of the two tendons at the knot of Henry and have a connection between them, it's a good thing. How about the insertion? Flexor digitorum longus. Flexor means it is in the sole of the foot or the bottom of the foot. Digitorum means it's going to the toes or to the fingers. Hallucis, it means it's going to the big toe. Pollicis means it's going to the thumb. In this case, it is the flexor digitorum, so it is going to the toes. Longus means it's longer. It will reach the distal pharynx. If you have longus, then you have another muscle called pervis. So what happened here? This tendon need to reach four toes, the four lateral toes. So this tendon expands and is joined by the quadratus plantae muscle, as you see in this diagram, and finally it divides into four tendons. And these tendons are inserted into the base of the distal pharynx of the second, third, fourth, and fifth toes. Just remember, these tendons are inserted into the plantar surface of the distal pharynx from two to five.
the nerve will be the tibial nerve. How about the action? It flexes the toes from two to five and also helps in plantar flexion of the ankle. Just remember in case of posterior tibial tendon insufficiency or rupture, the flexor digitorum longus transfer is used in combination with calcaneal osteotomy, Achilles tendon lengthening, plus or minus lateral column lengthening. Remember the arrangement of Tom, Dick, and Harry, and remember the knot of Henry. Thank you very much. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.